Hello everyone, welcome back to my channel. So for today, I'm gonna give you a very short tutorial. Uh, it's a kind of a, you know, tip and trick uh, related to malware analysis. So for those who would love to do malware analysis and if you want to do the um, analysis in a safe uh, or I would say safer environment then this would be your uh, choice or your option okay so uh, for the before we begin let's uh, start with the traffic analysis so malware traffic analysis this is the website where you can actually download a lot of sample malware uh, traffic and even the actual malware uh, itself yeah so we have the SOAR, uh, the PCAP files and the malware samples and then for if you want to learn more about malware uh, analysis I would suggest that you read this book practical malware analysis a very old book uh, I believe it was actually uh, written in 20 uh, let me see this um, 2011 if I'm not mistaken yeah but still applicable yeah then the second book that I'm uh, suggesting you to read is this one, the uh, Learning Malware Analysis, Explore the Concept Tools and Techniques to Analyze and Investigate Windows Malware. While well, this one is the uh, hands-on uh, guide uh, to dissecting malicious software. Um, first edition, very nice one. I use it for my lecture as well. Yeah then it's an they have this uh, ebook uh, edition kindle edition while this one also has the kindle edition okay now for the uh, stuff uh, let me just open up my kali so all you need if you want to do the uh, malware analysis and if you're a beginner and you would love to uh, do the uh, malware analysis but thinking about uh, uh, how to actually uh, do the analysis in a safer environment so number one you need to have the virtualization I'm currently uh, running uh, VMware workstation uh, version 15.5.2 built um, of course um, it's up to you you can choose any other uh, or any virtualization uh, you would love or you prefer and here is the uh, tip and trick so let me uh, zoom this one or uh, maximize the screen so all you need to do is um, you need to have yeah Kali Linux yeah I uh, dedicated my memory uh, for this virtual machine 8 gigabyte okay and the hard disk is about 100 gigabyte yeah because you need to actually store some um, uh, virtual machines so what I'm going to show you is to utilize what they call as uh, nested virtualization so right now I'm currently running my VMware workstation version 15.5 okay point two and I run Kali Linux right now within Kali Linux which is already uh, which is uh, installed on my PC or which is running on my uh, PC here I can easily install VirtualBox which is another uh, type of virtualization by typing apt get install virtual box yeah so of course you'll need to have the uh, internet connection so by default because I've already installed everything to speed up the process so next step is you can 
run this virtual box okay and this is what you will see so inside this or within this uh, virtual box which is running um, on uh, my VMware workstation or I would say that VMware workstation is the uh, first virtualization that I'm uh, currently running and the second virtualization that runs on my Kali Linux is Oracle VM uh, VirtualBox um, Manager which is actually uh, I'm actually running the uh, VirtualBox version 5 of course you can actually install the latest version if you like yeah and then inside the virtual box we i have uh installed or copied the windows um, xp yeah and ubuntu desktop and i can easily right click and select uh the settings yeah to have a look at the uh, settings like for example i can look at the general setting the advanced settings I can look at the uh, network setting by default is a host only adapter and it was actually set to listen to this um, vbox net or use the vbox net zero as the uh, uh, what it call this the network card yeah and the second virtualization i have is also having the same uh, settings Let's, let's look at the host adapter one yeah so I'm currently using host uh, local hosts for both of the machines yeah a host only adapter that will allow them to communicate I mean to, uh, that will allow both Windows and Ubuntu uh, machines to actually communicate with each other and on top of it I also configure my VMware workstation to have the uh, network card set to host only okay now this will make sure that your malware yeah, in case you're running very dangerous uh, malware within your um, virtualization uh, you can ass uh, assure that your malware will not be able to actually access your windows system because i'm actually running this on my windows so this is my windows right so what you can do is you can uh, let's just start by i would like to show you something so i'll start my windows uh, i'm not very sure about this but let me just uh, start the machine Hmm, something wrong with the machine oh maybe it was because of the CPU so um, let me just uh, do the normal start oops how about this yeah we have the same problem let me just uh, delete this and manually uh, add the uh, virtual machine yeah so I'll select new we just call it as Windows XP and you can set the memory like uh, 512 or maybe uh, 1024 one gigabyte and you can use the existing virtual hard disk which I have already copied somewhere let me just check where did I actually keep my yeah here it's under the virtual box VM I can just go to the Windows Cuckoo and VDI now with the VDI is the virtual um, disk for the uh, or utilized by the Oracle virtual box yeah we'll just select create yeah and i'll add another machine which is the ubuntu desktop 
and you can use the pre-configured uh, VM under the Ubuntu desktop and create cannot create a yeah, okay folder exists so maybe I'll just use different uh, I'll just call it as Ubuntu that's uh, my Ubuntu here, just Ubuntu that's DSD yeah, desktop yeah okay now because I've already created uh, the uh, virtual machine now I can start uh, to run this Windows XP okay so it will run Windows XP <clears throat> Okay, hang on for a while so this is my Windows XP I can adjust my Windows XP the size I'm adjusting the size okay and from there, what you can do is you can run any application, including malware, on your uh, desktop. Yeah. So let me just go to the. Uh, yeah. So this is the location where I can actually uh, connect to my. Um, what do you call this? Uh, remote uh, shared uh, disk or drive. So let me just go back <clears throat> and you can actually go to the settings to look at whether you have uh, enabled shared drive or not. Yeah, so this is the machine folder. You can select um, you can add the share. Uh, let me see. So under the folder path of uh, uh, root download with only auto mount and we can make it permanent okay and let's have a look at the uh, downloads so I have several things inside here and you can try to reconnect and i think you should be able to see this folder uh, yeah. so let's see why is it not uh, so again now um, let me check oh it was not safe earlier okay so put download let me check the uh, location okay and click OK and let's see now I can have the access to the download folder <clears throat> and here I can find yeah for example this one under the list this is actually um, a sample malware that I have um, downloaded from uh, this website the uh, malware traffic analysis under the guest block the post and this is the malware wanna cry ransomware yeah <clears throat> now let me just co uh, copy this so I'll adjust the window so that I will have 
better view. Yeah. Give you something like that. Okay. So I'll copy this to my somewhere in my computer maybe under the uh, my documents and I'll just put it somewhere in yeah I'll maybe just create a folder called temp and I'll copy this yeah, forget to actually go back to the uh, yeah I, I forgot to copy this so let me just copy and go to my documents go to the temp and extract the file yeah I'll copy the file and extract it let me just extract it extract the file by using the default uh, winzip yeah, password is infected and that's it Now I have this file that I'm going to demonstrate on how to actually um, run this particular uh, malware. Yeah, so you can actually uh, use the <coughs> the tools such as, for instance, um, Wireshark to monitor the connection. Yeah, I will just put any and we can try to analyze this and here we go we will double click the file let's uh, let's uh, before we double click the file to run it let's just right click go to the properties and see ah this is a um, a file I'm not very really sure what file is this but it's, uh, it's, it says that the description says it's Microsoft Disk Defragmenter, which is actually not. Yeah. Uh, this is a fake file. Yeah. And if you run this, you will see what happened after a few seconds. Okay. So this uh, analysis or what I'm uh, doing is actually known as the uh, behavior analysis. Now, after I just double click the file in a few seconds, you will see several files created and oops, this is the actual WannaCrypt version 2.0 that has encrypted everything. Yeah. So that's how you do the uh, testing so if you're, if you're afraid that this file would uh, actually you know infect your files on your windows one of the safest way is actually to run your virtual box on top of the vmware so this is called nested virtualization all right so you can just uh, close it yeah for later, uh, you know, analysis. Okay, and you can easily uh, select save the machine state or power off the machine. So let's just save the machine state. All right, that's it. That's how you run the um, what do you call this? The uh, Windows XP on virtual box while you, you also run your Kali Linux uh, by utilizing the VMware workstation, okay? So that's all for today and ciao.